Welcome to Nursing with Professor B. Is COVID-19 killing more men than women? And if so, why? If you want to know the answer to these questions, make sure you stay tuned until the end. But first, make sure you hit the like button, make sure that you subscribe, and make sure you turn on that notification bell. All right, let's go. Okay, so is COVID-19 killing more men than women? And if so, why? So some statistics. In Italy, 71% of reported deaths have been in men. In China, 64%. In New York, as of April 9th, more than 60% of over 6,200 total deaths have been in men. And one study in China with a fairly good sample size, you see 44,672 participants. So when we question the validity of a study, one of the questions is, did they have enough people in the study? So 44,000, that's a decent sample size. Anyway, so out of these 44,672 participants, they were positive for COVID-19 and they found the fatality rate for men was 2.8% and 1.2% for women. So yes, it does appear to be much more fatal in men. But like my little bitmoji is saying, why though? Health experts basically, um, <laughs> so health experts are all over the place, right? They have theories and they're not 100% certain on them. But some of these theories can be boiled down to health habits, genetics and hormones, and delay in seeking care. So let's examine those a little bit more in depth, each one of those. So in regards to health habits, Men tend to have higher rates of cardiovascular and respiratory diseases, right? So they tend to have more high blood pressure, more high cholesterol. They tend to have more COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or emphysema, things of that nature, right? And then by having those predispositions already, if they were to get sick, then that exacerbates everything. And then they say that, that men tend to smoke and drink at higher rates than women. I put a little asterisk though because there's a little caveat to it. In countries like Spain, where the percentage of males and females who report smoking is not significantly different, they are still seeing this profound male bias in severity of COVID-19. So we can't just blame men on their health habits. There has to be something more at play here. Then we have genetics and hormones. So women right? tend to mount a stronger immune response than men when um, they encounter some pathogen. And hence, it's a double-edged sword. So women have more cases of autoimmune diseases, right? What is the definition of an autoimmune disease? It's the body's immune system being so active that it tends to, it starts to attack the body. It starts to attack itself. So it's a double-edged sword. We do tend to mount a stronger immune response to things. So um, that means that we recognize a pathogen early on and we activate our defense system in order to fight this, these pathogens, this bacteria or virus off. And the theory is that sex hormones like testosterone and estrogen modulate immune response. They're, the way that they are responding and or their lack of response to the virus is increasing their susceptibility to it. Um, there's also, so estrogen seems to be more protective against viruses and bacteria. They're ten, they tend the hormone estrogen tends to mount a more aggressive response um, versus testosterone. And then the X chromosome has immune response genes. So men have one X chromosome, women have two X chromosomes. And usually the additional X chromosome that women have, um, it's silenced, but 10% of these genes can be activated. So the hypothesis is that perhaps there's a double dose of protection due to this other X chromosome, up to 10% of it being activated. So I wanna make it very clear though that this doesn't mean that women can't be seriously affected. They can if they have hypertension. There's new studies out that if um, people that are on ACE inhibitors and ARBs, um, they are being adversely affected. There was an article in the Journal of the American Medical Association, the JAMA, about how ACEs and ARBs could potentially be making people that get COVID-19 more susceptible to serious complications for it. Um, so I, and I don't, we all should be acting right now like if each one of us is a carrier and like we want to protect the world, we need to be responsible. Um, 
It does seem to be affecting males more though and more severely. Another hypothesis is the fact that men often delay in seeking care. You know, how many times do you guys say, Ugh, I don't want to go to the doctor, I don't want to go, you know, blah, blah, blah. So how often do men drag their feet to go to the doctor, right? Um, in the US, people that have been tested have been 56% women. So more women are getting tested. Of those 56%, only 16% tested positive. Only 44% of men got tested, and out of those 44%, 23% were positive for COVID. So when men, so even though a less amount of men got tested, they were more positive. So men tend to wait until more serious symptoms arise. Um, not to get, you know, not to pick on you guys, but you guys tend to wait till it's a little bit more serious to actually do something about it. One study found that out of 1,591 cases of criti critically ill patients that were admitted into the ICU, 82% of them were men. And the New York Department of Health reports about 39 female deaths per 100,000 people and 71 male deaths per 100,000. So in conclusion, yes, COVID does appear to be not only affecting more men, but killing more men too. But based on what I have been looking into, it does appear to be more serious than men. It does appear affecting, it does appear to be affecting more men. Now, again, I want to reiterate women, you still need to be careful. It's not like we have, uh, it's not like we can just go out on the street and be like, oh, I'm a woman, I'm immune to this. No, it's not. Plenty of women have died from COVID as well. This would be interesting to study. The fact that being male is a risk factor could potentially be an answer that we could study as to um, coming up with some kind of vaccine or medication that please stay safe, wash your hands, Please do not use gloves and then go eat from a Cheeto bag, okay? You just touched everything and you're putting that in your mouth and then you don't wash your hands and you use those same gloves to go touch stuff again. I don't want to touch a cart after you just had some Cheetos and then you touch the cart. Please, that is irresponsible. Wash your hands, stay home, wear a mask when you go out, and please don't litter. Please do not throw those gloves on the floor. Like, we're not animals here. Please take care of this planet. It's the only planet we have. Staying safe means you don't go to house parties. You don't hang out with your boy's boy and have some beers. You're supposed to just stay quarantined with your family. The, the more we don't follow these guidelines, the more we're going to have to stay quarantined stay quarantined basically the more we're gonna have to follow this social isolation right now in the united states we have 530,200 confirmed cases of covid um this is engineered by john hopkins university so it is reputable we have 20,646 total deaths from covid and just maybe what three months since this all started happening we are not flattening the curve. We are going straight up like a roller coaster ride. So this is very real. And they have estimated, there's been different estimates, anywhere from they expect to lose 80,000 to 200,000 people in the United States. Right? There have been a, a dif different amount of estimates. Um, some estimate we will lose about 80,000 people in the United States due to COVID-19 this year. Some say up to 200,000. So we're already at 20,000, okay? This is very real. This is not to be joking around with, I, you know, um, in regards to not following the social isolation precautions. So I do urge you to please be responsible, be a responsible adult and let's follow social isolation for as long as it's mandated um only going outside for essentials essentials okay mm -hmm.